hundreds of thousands of tech workers are out of jobs, massive layoffs, and hiring freezes. And if that wasn't enough, 70% of recruiters say it's okay to post fake job listings. If you've been applying and hearing nothing back, it used to be because of your resume. But another reason could be that the job never existed. On LinkedIn, only 8% of applicants ever get an interview response. That means 92 out of 100 times, you hear nothing at all. So what happened to the industry that once promised stability, freedom, and six-figure salaries? And more importantly, can the tech job market ever recover? And if it does, what kind of roles will make it through? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Let's go back a little bit to understand how we got here. The tech industry has always gone through ups and downs, fast growth, then big crashes, then recovery again. The first big boom was in the 1990s during the dot-com era. The internet was new and full of possibilities. Startups were launching everywhere. This was also when I first moved to San Francisco and my sister started working at a startup. When I saw firsthand how investors were throwing money at anything online. I remember going into her office and it was so nice and she was getting paid so much. I was so excited for her, which also inspired me to get into tech myself. And it's not just an anecdote, the numbers back it up. From 1990 to 2000, tech jobs in the US grew by 36% and average pay doubled. Then the bubble burst. In 2000, many internet companies collapsed almost overnight. Investors were pulling out and thousands of people lost their jobs, including my sister. Between 2001 and 2004, tech employment fell by nearly 18%. After that crash, the industry slowly started to recover. So from 2004 to 2008, heck started growing again. But then in 2008, another shock happened, the financial crises. And once again, tech jobs disappeared. I finished my computer science degree in 2007 and I got really lucky because I signed my job offer with IBM six months before graduation. But a lot of people in my class and the one after mine could not find jobs at all. When the economy finally recovered in 2009, tech bounced back again, stronger than ever. Between 2010 and 15, tech jobs grew by 20%, almost twice as fast as the rest of the job market. By 2015, there were about 4.6 million people working in tech back to the levels we saw in the height of the dot-com boom. Wages were also climbing fast. In 1990, an average tech worker made about $1.60 for every $1 earned by someone who was not in tech. By 2015, that gap had grown. Now, tech workers were earning more than double the national average. At that point, Tech felt unstoppable. It was the best place to build a career, good pay, exciting work, and endless opportunities from smartphones to social media. Tech became the center of the global economy. When I joined WhatsApp as the 19th engineer, it later got acquired by Meta for $19 billion. It was an epic time, and at the time, it was one of the biggest tech acquisitions in history. We were growing fast, hiring nonstop, and opening new offices around the world. One of my projects was actually opening our WhatsApp engineering office in London. We went from zero to 100 engineers in just 18 months. As a hiring manager, it was pretty tough though because every candidate that I wanted to hire had like five other competing offers. And we weren't the only ones hiring like this, right? Every major company was fighting for talent. For a while, companies were bragging about their growing headcount. It was a sign of growth and optimism and investors loved it. But like every wave in tech history, that one also did not last forever. The same pattern was starting again, rapid growth, overhiring, and correction. Starting in 2023, companies like Amazon, Meta, and Google started massive layoffs. According to layoffs.fyi, over 200,000 tech employees were laid off in 2023, and in 2024, another 153,000 lost their jobs. In 2025 so far, over 91,000 have already been cut. That's half a million people, and many of them are experienced engineers. I still remember messaging some of my former teammates who got hit. Many of these cut hit administrative positions or mid-level software engineers or middle management. In some cases, companies were laying off people who just got hired. And at the same time, new job openings were dropping significantly. According to Indeed, tech job postings plunged through the end of 2023 and kept 
falling. By 2025, they were 36% below the 2020 level. But what's discouraging people most right now isn't just the lack of jobs. It's the quality of the hiring process itself. Companies started posting openings they didn't really plan to fill. Some did it to look like they were growing. Others just wanted to collect resumes for later. This is called building a pipeline because the industry in the future is uncertain. They don't really know what's going to happen next month. So they're creating a safety net by keeping a database in case hiring picks up again. This is called ghost job. It's a job posting for a role that does not exist or that the company has no intention of filling. An analysis found that 20 to 40 percent of all jobs in the U.S. are likely ghost jobs. I mean, no wonder people feel invisible and discouraged during the job application process. You apply, you wait, and nothing ever happens. In 2023, job application to interview rate dropped from 12 percent to 8.4 percent. Interview to hire rate fell by 36 percent. And by the end of 2024, the average time to find a new job stretched to six months. Can you imagine looking for a job for six months? It must be so exhausting. Some even finish multiple rounds of interview and then never hear back. Here's a post from Reddit with the title, so, I got ghosted. Got through two interviews with this known company smoothly. The last interviewer told me that HR will follow up in the next days, but they didn't. I even followed up nicely with HR and the employees I knew were there, but I got no reply. I would rather have a rejection email than be in the limbo. Stories like this is everywhere, like on Reddit and LinkedIn real people stuck in limbo. It's frustrating, it's demoralizing, and it's made a lot of people wonder if tech is still worth it. So the question is, will the tech job market recover? The short answer is yes and no. If you're waiting for a 2021 comeback, the days of mass hiring and free lunches, it may not. But that doesn't mean tech is dying. It's just transforming. And the biggest driver of that change is AI. AI is eliminating some jobs, but it's also creating new ones faster than other technology ever did. AI job titles have tripled since 2022. Gen AI job titles are nearly 250 times more common than just two years ago. The US Department of Labor says that software development jobs will grow 16% over the next 10 years. But that growth isn't happening evenly across the board. It's concentrated in a hand full of specialized high-skill roles in AI and machine learning. Meanwhile, traditional software engineering roles are shrinking. And here are the numbers. Full stack is down 32%, QA down by 28%, hardware is down 19%, front end down 22%, DevOps is down 31%. And it's not just about the roles. The shift is also hitting some groups harder than others. For recent graduates, this is the toughest job market in a decade. Job offers for new grads are down 30 to 40% over the past two years. And while national unemployment sits around 4.2%, thousands of graduates cannot break into the market because companies want people who can prove they can do the work with prior experience. And it's like a chicken and egg problem, right? You can't get a job because you don't have any prior experience. So how are you supposed to build prior experience? So many people are turning to gig work instead. So if you're thinking about a career in AI or worried about your current tech job, here's what you need to understand. The jobs are not completely gone. They're just shifting. And here's something hopeful. Despite everything I've just told you, there's actually a recovery happening. It's steady, though pretty small, but very selective. Since the lowest point in 2023, tech job openings have shown a slight but consistent uptake. Software engineers with AI skills are getting 9.5% premium in salary offers compared to those without it. Companies are hiring, just not the way they used to. So here are five most trending AI job titles in 2025. Number one, machine learning engineer, senior machine learning engineer, computer vision engineer, senior AI engineer, and staff machine learning engineer. I don't know if you've noticed, but the catch here is that most of these roles are senior or staff, and most machine learning or computer vision engineers have a PhD. But if you want to know about job jobs that are less mentioned in AI that are more junior friendly, you want to watch this video and I'll see you there.